The Power Rangers is an amazing series produced by the Boom Studios. And we just recently wrapped up the Draken storyline in which he shattered the Morphin Grid and the entire Power Rangers multiverse. Well, you can't do that and not have an aftermath. So today we're going to be bringing you the first part of Beyond the Grid, where we're going to meet another interesting ranger, the Rogue Ranger. If you're wondering where you are, well, it's the Complete Story series here at Comic Storian, where we take your favorite trade paperbacks or single issues or video games or movies or TV shows and break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read them dramatically back to you. I turn it into an audiobook narrative. It's kind of fun. Now, let's get right into that Beyond the Grid storyline and learn who the Rogue Ranger is. At the end of a long battle, the Rangers of Earth managed to put the multiverse back together after Lord Draken tore it apart in his quest for power. There were some things that could not be brought back, like the life of Tommy Oliver. Though with the help of Tommy's essence, the multiverse was restored at the cost of the Rangers losing their memories of the events that had unfolded. All was as it should be except for one thing. The Promethea and the displaced rangers that had been rescued from Draken's clutches. The Promethea was brought to a universe where there was no Morphin Grid, and those few rangers with powers were quickly losing them after every transformation. Now the Promethea drifts in an endless void with no signs of life, slowly running out of resources with no way to return back to their own dimension. Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and everyone is doing their part to contribute. That is, until one day, Grace and her team find something, a distress signal. With supplies running low, the decision is made. They are going to investigate. Tanya Sloan, the Yellow Zeo Ranger, Cam Wantanabe, the Green Samurai Ranger, Kimberly Hart, the Ranger Slayer from Draken's Timeline, who defected, Mike Corbett, the Magma Defender, Andros, the Red Space Ranger, and Heckle, the Dino Charge Dark Ranger, are all sent to board the unidentified pod where the distress signal is coming from. But as Mike notices it's empty, he realizes something. They were just baited to leave the Promethea. Back on their ship, a distorted purple ranger appears on the bridge, holding out something in her hand. She holds up her arm as she begins to drain the last of the Morphin energy from the Promethea. Andros' sister, Charon, tries to stop the intruder, but before she can even land a hit, the mysterious ranger disappears. Charon runs to the computer, shouting that they have a problem. And back on the trap ship, Andros tells her that they have their own problems. They're currently surrounded by creatures and have had their powers taken away. As everyone inches closer together, Kim says that they asked for it. They wanted to know if life was in this universe, and here's their answer. One of the creatures tells the others to kill the heretic, to save the strong-bodied for the Praetor's harvest. Another creature fires off a Tanya, but before it can hit her, Mike grabs it mid-flight, stating that if he didn't know any better, they're trying to be rude. He charges forward, punching into one of the creatures, telling everyone to hurry out through the airlock. He'll hold them back. As everyone fights their way through, Mike presses himself against the door, but Kim reaches out, grabbing him, stating that it's way too early for the heroic self-sacrifice. Cam hits the switch, locking the door in place, and Tanya throws herself on Kim, telling her thank you. Of all the rangers that they could have with them, she's glad that she's with them. Tanya then looks over at Mike, stating that, on the other hand, please don't be so reckless next time. As everyone catches their breath, Kim looks up and sees Heckle, stating that there's something about him. Who is he? Heckle says, well, he's just him. But Kim tells him, no, he's something else. Something like her. After a moment of silence, he says that his rangers, they were pulled from a different point in their timeline. He's from farther. They knew him when he was, well, a different person. Grace comes through the radio telling everyone that they need to find that person, the rogue ranger that just sucked up the only thing that is keeping their ship afloat. Get back in the ship and find her and bring her here. A short while later, over at the Amethyst Asteroid at Remy's Tavern, the alien bar owner Remy tends to the rogue ranger, asking how many times does he have to tell her? Take off that rotten helmet when you come in, Ari. Ari tells her that she thinks they're in danger, that she'll just stay in her suit. She didn't want to come back and risk. Remy tightens up the bandage, stating that if she finds out that she's been out there with a busted arm, she'll bust the second one for not coming to her. As Ari takes off her helmet, a voice calls out to them, stating that they know it's impolite to interrupt. But they need to talk to the one who drained their ship. Ari morphs her helmet back on, telling Remy to stand back. And using the excess power, the rangers suit up and they surround the two of them. Ari shouts, asking, You have more vortex energy? It's it's too much. You're going to leave them right here. Remy backs up, stating that it's too late. The servants of the Praetor are already here. The Crimson Raiders. The creatures from the ship start to teleport down into the bar, and one of them shouts, Thief! Traitor to the Lord and Praetor! Return the Solar Rix to its true master. Cam tells everyone that they know how the saying goes. The enemy of my enemy looks pretty freaking great right now. 
An all-out brawl breaks out with the rangers starting to beat into the alien creatures with what little time they have left. Remy even helps bashing out one with a pan. Once the creatures are cornered, they start to teleport back out and Ares shouts, asking, how does it feel? But before the final creature can leave, he stops by the ranger ship. As the creatures begin to clear out, Ares asks, how are they like her? Without weapons, how do they drive the creatures back? Miles tells her that the Praetor soldiers have been fighting for a thing. The rangers fight for people. Andro steps forward stating that this woman stole the life force of their ship. They'll take the Solarix with them now. Eri yells that she did not live this long to give the Solarix to some strangers. And if she is to die here, then they're just gonna take it far away from the Praetor. Remy rushes up stating, wait, wait, wait. Please don't harm this young woman. And Cam says, actually, they kind of have strict rules about people dying. Ari pauses and then asks, you don't mean to kill me? And Remy quietly whispers that they need to go. The tavern is supposed to be a safe place. The patrons would soon chase them down after the Praetor catches wind that the Solarix is here. Ari and Remy jump onto the ranger's ship stating that they'll go with them, but the Solarix stays with her. Meanwhile, elsewhere, the last alien to retreat says that the thief has taken flight. They can track her and the sacred Solarix. As the Praetor looks at the hologram, he smiles. Once the ship takes off, Remy tells Eri that these people wear the same armor as her. They should be on the same side, right? And Eri sighs, stating that there is no same side. That would make them too easy of a target. Andros takes off his suit, telling her that he can understand their predicament. He has got a family, too, that they're trying to protect. Who is this Praetor, and why is he hunting them? Eri begins to explain that the Praetor is a conqueror and a destroyer. He tells them that this universe is dying. For generations, he said that there was another world for them to go to, and if they follow him, he'll take them there. They assumed that what he meant was actually the afterlife. Eri then holds up her fist, showing the solar stating, This is what the Praetor is after. For thousands of years, their universe has been slowly dying off. Nothing new forms up and the worlds crumble away. Many of those years, people just survived, taking and stealing what scraps they could get. One day, she went off to try and find some food for her and her friends, and she saw something. She fell backwards onto a ledge, and the man handing out the food tried to save her. He helped her back up, and he fell. She hurried down to see if he was okay, but when he woke, he handed her the stone, stating that she must be the one to carry it. She tried to tell him no, and he placed it in her hand, and she began to see things. The power of the Solarix is not like theirs. It flickers and it stutters. Sometimes it even hurts. When she clears her mind, she can reach out to connect with someone, and it shines, and it suddenly becomes easy to change. However, every time that she can change, someone ends up getting hurt. The power of the Solarex is so raw, so powerful, that it glitches whenever she feels any kind of guilt, fear, anger, doubt, it never worked properly. Kim tells her that's because she's always been alone, and Eri says that she felt it changed something inside of her. When she was alone, these creatures would appear. Whenever her friends were in trouble, she was there to protect them. She isn't the stone's keeper because she is strong, or fast or even holy. It's not because she's some great warrior. It's simply no one else can carry it. There's no army, no resistance, no rebellion or uprising to turn to. Those who fight just die faster. Remy then asks everyone if they came from a world that had a grid. And Andros tells her yes. Other worlds have it as well, but this one is the only one that seems to be without a Morphin grid. The Solarex is the one light in the void. The only Morphin energy in their whole plane of existence. A tiny, fragile sun. Heckle then asks, all in favor of helping the girl, and Andros tells him that they should make their way back to the Promethea. Andros then radios back to the space station, telling everyone that they have the girl with them and she is not a prisoner. As the ranger ship dock, the tracking beacon the aliens left shines and there's suddenly a crack a thoom Everyone runs to the windows to look and they see the Praetor outside with a fleet of ships all making their way towards the Promethea. The Praetor calls out to listen well. Give me the Solar Ranger and the Solarix she carries and you will be spared. I shall show you the way home. You only live because I allow it. That is your purpose and what a magnificent purpose it is to aid me in my quest. Andros uses the last of his power to make his sword say never. They will fight even if they but Eri tells everyone to stop and holds out her arm. As the Solarix shines, she goes on stating, protect this, just as it has protected her. She opens it to them, all of them. Charge up, because it's morphin' time! It's morphin' time! I love saying that. Like, it's kind of like whenever I get to say Avengers Assemble in these videos, I'm always like, Avengers Assemble! But no, it's like, it's morphin' time! Even recording the audio, I, get, I gotta bring my 
hands together or do like ninjaku stuff. No, ninjaku's Legos, I think. Either way, I love me some Power Rangers, and I think you do too, because you watched the video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be bringing you more of the Beyond the Grid storyline on a monthly basis, rotating it around with the Scooby Apocalypse series. Uh, we do a lot of weird things here at Comic Story, and if you subscribe, you'll get more of that. Give this video a like to let me know. Benny, I don't care the drag is over. I want more Rogue Ranger, okay? And uh, then we'll do more of this. That's, that's how this works. I'll see you next time right here.